Hello guys and welcome to the sixth part of the texturing in Blender video tutorial. I am the creator of the game called Snappy Mouse Run and in the previous video we extracted the texture from the background images using a technique called projection painting. In this video we'll clean up the texture in a photo editing software outside Blender called GIMP and afterwards import the finished texture back into Blender. Big question, why outside Blender and why GIMP? GIMP is a free photo editing software, fits perfectly our use case and makes a nice open source combo together with Blender. Of course any other photo editing software would do as well, but my tool of choice for this video is GIMP. So let's start. We are still in Blender in the texture paint workspace right now, visible here at the top. On the left is the image editor with the texture image called texture base that is currently set as the working texture. On the right is the preview of the texture on the teapot object that we are texturing. So let's take a look. We see that the texture could use some cleanup. The top cover has a bluish tint, different from the rest of the teapot, dirty spots on the back, under the handle some stretched parts and here on the bottom as well. In the last video I showed you how to clean up the texture in Blender using the available texture paint tools, so you can check that out. In this video I will rather show you how to edit the texture in GIMP. So let's export this texture base image. In the image editor go to image, save a copy, I'll call it texture base export and let's get over to GIMP. This is GIMP. If it looks different than the default layout, maybe it's because I've enabled the single window mode under Windows menu and I changed the icon theme to the colored one, but it's not relevant for the demonstration, any layout or theme will do. Let's load the texture image first, go to file, open as layer, find the texture and open. A new layer is added, visible under layers here and it is our texture. You can zoom in by pressing Ctrl and using the mouse wheel and move the image around using the middle mouse button. We don't want to edit the original layer so let's create a copy by clicking on the create duplicate icon double click the layers name and let's name this one texture base original and this one texture base clean okay we want to get rid of these dirty areas we want a clean white teapot the easiest way to do this is to select everything except the blue parts and paint it all white. Since these are mainly different shades of grey, we will use the fuzzy select tool, make sure only anti-aliasing and draw mask is checked and select by is set to composite. We also want to automatically feather the selection border, 2 pixels are enough. This will prevent sharp edges on the selection outline and smooth out the transition. Using this tool we can select similar colors by adjusting the threshold value. The threshold is adjusted on the fly while selecting, make sure fuzzy selection is active and the copy layer is selected. Now press and hold the left mouse button on some white area we want to select. You will see a preview of what will be selected as a pink mask and just slowly drag the mouse in any direction to adjust the threshold. Notice the threshold value is changing under the tool options. We want everything except the blue parts therefore adjust the threshold so that most of white areas are masked. If we go too far then the blue parts will also get penetrated and masked. We don't want that. We need to find a sweet spot, let's say about 80. Release the left mouse button to apply the selection, zoom in. Here is the outline of the selection and it's important to have in mind that the white parts are selected and not the blue ones. By looking at the selection outline we can see that we missed some grey spots, also some blue parts are selected that should not be. Let's correct the selection. First remove the blue parts from the selection, either activate the subtract from selection in the tool options or just hold control and press and drag the left mouse button over the blue part you want to remove. The part gets masked so you see what is going to be removed, but don't worry worry you can always undo the action with the Ctrl Z key combination. Also don't worry about the blue spots, just focus on the outline for now. Outline looks good. Now there is a very easy way to remove the spots or islands like these on the selection at once. First go to invert in the select menu. This inverts the selection, now the blue parts are selected and the islands have become holes in the selection. We can remove the holes with the remove holes menu item again under the select menu. Invert the selection back and the white parts are selected again. Now let's add the missing grey parts to the selection. Activate the button under tool options or just hold shift and press and drag the left mouse button over the missing grey part. The selection is now complete, only white and grey parts are selected and let's fill them with a clean white color. Select the bucket fill tool, make sure white is set as a foreground color, set opacity of the tool to 100%, fill type foreground color, fill whole section selected and fill the selection by clicking on it. Now remove the selection, go to select none. The background is clean, let's take care of the blue parts now. You see all these shiny reflections going on on the blue parts, unless you really want those to be baked into the texture, the reflections should rather be handled by the material of the 3D object in order to have better control over them. 
So let's remove the reflections. First, we need to select those parts. Select the Select by Color tool. It works like the Fuzzy Selection tool also has a threshold value. And the only difference is that the Fuzzy Selection tool selects only the localized areas where the mouse has clicked. And this one selects globally all pixels on the image. That's exactly what we want. We want all the bright pixels selected. Set the options the same as for the Fuzzy Selection tool. Let's start with the brightest pixels, obviously with the white color. And drag it until we have selected all the bright spots. We don't need to be that precise here. It's not a problem if you select a bit more. I will go with a threshold around 170. Check that all shiny parts are selected. The important parts are also the gray spots. Here not only the blue color gets reflected, but all colors get reflected. These are the tricky parts and we will tackle them first. Now we obviously don't want the background to be selected as well, so let's deselect it by holding control, clicking on the background and bringing the threshold to about 20. Now go to color, levels. Here we can adjust the color levels of the selection. Since all the selected parts are actually blue, let's also make the gray reflected parts blue. We can do this here under channel by decreasing the levels of the red and green channels. This way the blue channel should be more apparent. Select red and turn the red output level down to about 100. Do the same for the green channel. This should have fixed the gray parts. Also a general fix. Turn the overall value a bit darker by dragging this middle slider to about 0.8. Clear the selection. This is the result. It looks a bit too saturated, but we will fix that in a moment. We see that some parts are still a bit lighter. You could select those parts again and readjust the levels for those parts, but I'm satisfied as it is. So let's fix the saturation. Go to colors, hue saturation and turn the saturation down to about minus 30. Lightness a bit up to 10 and hue just to a softer blue minus 5 is okay. Let's compare to the original. The original has a bit of a purple shine on it. Let's try to fix that by changing the color temperature. The previous hue saturation change had no effect on the white pixels, but the temperature has. So before the temperature correction, select only the blue parts first, select by color tool again. But this time we will start with a color that should be excluded and then invert the selection. Excluded should be the white parts, threshold to about 70, invert the selection and the blue parts are now selected. It's a neat trick. Okay, go to colors, color temperature and change the color temperature until it looks similar to the original. 7000 is okay. Again, very subtle. Let's compare to the original. The reflections are gone. I'm also satisfied with the color. One additional thing we can do is to get rid of these grainy white pixels over some areas. Best way to remove them is using the noise reduction filter. Clear the selection. Go to filter, enhance, noise reduction. The noise removal blurs the image out a bit, so I will apply a sharpen filter to enhance the details. Go to filter, enhance, sharpen. Defaults are okay. Here is before, here is after much cleaner. If it looks too dark, you can bring the overall color levels up a bit. Go to color levels and bring the overall value to about 1.1. You see the difference by checking the preview. Now the final thing we should fix are the stretched parts here. First, notice that the upper and lower parts are symmetrical. That's perfect. So we need to fix only one side and mirror the change to the other side. Let's find the symmetry painting dialog. Go to windows, dockable dialogs, symmetry painting. Here it is, set symmetry to mirror and we want horizontal symmetry. A symmetry line appears and with this slider we control its position. Position the line, 428.5. Although the preview line didn't move to the sub-pixel level, believe me, it is at the center of the pixel. Okay, now grab the paintbrush, color white, take a harder brush here, hardness 95 is good. Adjust the size and the stroke like this should actually be enough. No fancy curves, just an artistic stroke with a bit of cleanup. Notice how it mirrors the change. The other side as well. Looks good, turn off symmetry, set it to none. Compare again, nice and clean. Now maybe you would say, that's all great, but what if I want a dirty teapot instead? No problem, in that case hide the clean texture, select the rectangle select tool and with it select a dirty part. It should be fairly big and evenly colored, so make sure you don't select anything else. This will be our dirt pattern. Make sure the original image layer is selected. Now press Ctrl C to copy it and Ctrl V to paste it. A new floating layer should appear above it. Select the scale tool and scale the layer over the whole canvas. And finally apply it as a new layer. This will be our background, but before let's make some changes to it. First sharpen, go to filter, enhance, sharpen. You can turn the amount up a bit, but don't overdo it. 
Since this is dirt, it makes sense to also use an artistic filter like Oilify just to smear it out a bit. Also, let's bring the saturation down, go to color saturation and set scale to zero. The dirt background almost done. Now we need the blue parts. So hide everything except the layer with the clean image. Make sure it's selected as we have done previously. Select by color, select the white background with a threshold around 70, invert. Blue parts are now selected, copy them as a layer, Control c Control v add the layer, drag the dirty background under the cutout blue parts and make it visible. Now we can control the dirt level by duplicating the background layer and changing the mode of the new layer to multiply. Want more dirt? Duplicate new layer again. Now we have two multiplication layers. Maybe get one of them over the blue parts so they also get a bit dirty. Let's compare the results. That's the original texture we started with. That's the clean texture. And that's the dirty texture. Now let's export those. First the clean texture, file, export as, I'll name it texture clean, export. And the dirty one, file, export as, texture dirty, export. Now let's get back to Blender and see how the textures look like on the object. Back in Blender again in the texture paint workspace, make sure the render mode is set to material and let's change the viewport shading to studio. Under properties go to material tab and under base color select open image and find the previously exported textures. The clean texture first, that's the clean one, so turn the roughness all the way down to zero, so it gets really glossy. That's what I meant previously when I said let the material handle the reflections. Now let's add a dirty teapot next to the clean one. Change the mode to object mode in the viewport, select the object, press shift T to duplicate it, press X to constrain the movement on the X axis, move the new object to the side, under the object material tab copy the material and under base color open the dirty texture. Change the roughness to 0.75, deselect the object, this one is more dusty. Finally let's add another teapot with the original base color to have a nice comparison. Here they are. Our teapot has now two clean textures. That's it for this video. If you haven't already make sure to check out my previous texture painting videos where I extracted this particular texture from the background images using a technique called projection painting. In the next video we will start a new very exciting and dynamic chapter called 3D animation. So make sure to subscribe and as always thank you very much for watching. Give a like and subscribe if you found this video useful and want to see more content like this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.